Good evening. It's 5.30. It's time for the City Commission meeting to come into session. Would you please stand as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you to all that ventured out tonight in this cold, icy weather, hoping for better weather down the road, maybe spring. All right, uh, gentlemen, have you had a chance to look at the uh, agenda? Uh, Commissioner Hayes and Commissioner Kaplish, do you have any additions or any uh, changes that you would like to make? I have none. I have no modifications either. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? I move that we adopt the agenda as printed. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Next on the agenda, we have a presentation. We're gonna recognize the recognition of Director of Utilities, Terry Leibarger, who is retiring after over 40 years of service to the City of Independence. And I've got a little bio here I'm going to read concerning Terry's service. Terry began working for the city in 1980 as a PS1, PSW1 in the street department. He transferred to wastewater treatment as a maintenance mechanic and relief operator in 1984, serving in that position until 1995. He was then promoted to water sewer department foreman. He served in that position until 1999 when he was promoted to interim public works director, serving in that position until 2000. He was then promoted to assistant utilities director, serving in that position until 2006 when he was promoted to utilities director where he has served since. Terry, on behalf of the commissioners and all the city staff and the community of independence, I would like to thank you for your over 40 years of service to the community, and I wish you uh, a happy retirement, and don't forget us. Don't be surprised if you get called down the road with a question or two, but don't be a stranger. But uh, on behalf of everyone, thank you very much for your dedication to the City of Independence, and it's a retirement well deserved. Thank you, Terry. I've worked with because uh, it's been an honor serving the community and I will continue to any way I can to make independence a better place to live so thank you all thank you Terry thank you Terry <laughs> awesome. okay next on the list we have the consent agenda uh, Commissioner Hayes and Commissioner Flish um, do you have any comments to make concerning that? Excuse me. I uh, move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. 3-0. All right, moving along. Items four. Items for commission action. Item A. Consider awarding demolition bids for four... 14 South Wald Avenue and 416 South 18th Street. David? Uh, Mayor, uh, these are two houses that have been condemned as dangerous and unsafe, and uh, we only did receive one bid. In fact, uh, the other bidder told me today he's been tied up in Dodge City and unable just to bid on it, so uh, we would therefore recommend the one bidder at the uh, price that was listed, sir, of, I don't have that in front of me. Uh, for $7,650 for 
for JRB Industries? Yes. Okay. And they've been doing um, a lot of the demolition here lately yes. of houses. Yes. I noticed they were working on the uh, North 12, 1219, North 9th? Correct. That one? Okay. All right. And they seem to be doing a, a good job doing meeting a good all job the requirements and of the contract. they're meeting all the requirements and cleaning the lots and following all the requirements set forth by the city. Great, and they seem to be doing it at a reasonable price, so that's, yes. that's a plus for us. Yes. Um, Commissioner Hayes and Commissioner Kaflis, do you have any questions concerning this? I have none. When you look at the individual bids, are they, uh, for the houses, are they falling in line with where the past bids have come? Yes. So we're comfortable yeah. that it was an accurate yes. good? Yes, yep. Okay, I have no other questions. Do I have a motion? I move to award the removal of 414 South Wald Avenue and 416 South 18th Street to JRB Industries in the amount of $7,650 for both properties. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B. Consider authorizing the city manager to sign an engagement letter with Tanner LLC to create and analyze the results of a citizen satisfaction survey. Uh, Kelly? Mayor and commissioners, as, as you know, with the strategic plan, we this was one of the intention statements. It also was uh, when the strategic plan was done, an initial uh, community uh, citizen survey was done, and this is kind of a midpoint trying to, uh, to follow up and hear from the citizens and get some feedback on that. And so this is all related to that and our efforts to increase our communications. If I understand right, this will be done um, on social media and also by mail, is that correct? Well, uh, we will, on the survey there'll part. be a link that they can go to and fill it out online and then that we'll also uh, mail out some paper copies because not everybody has access to that. Sure. And I, th I believe in the original um, strategic plan we had around 500 respond, which is really good. So hopefully we can get that many people engaged this time. So how many of these uh, surveys are we um, planning to mail out? Well, it depends. If we mail them out to all the utility customers, you're talking a little over 4,000. So it'll just be uh, maybe those will be picked at random as far as mailing, and then everyone else hopefully would be able to clink on social yeah, media. Yeah, I'll visit with Mackie to see how best to, to do that. Um, and then also if people want to pick up a paper copy, I mean, we'll ha we usually had them, we had them at the library in different places they could pick up. But of course we weren't in a pandemic then either. So it's a little bit uh, different, but um, we may be able to just do them as an insert in the water billing too. Okay, that was, that was gonna mm -hmm. be my next question. Because those are going that out as well. So then you're just paying for printing and inserting. Okay, all right. Commissioner Hayes or Commissioner Kaplish, any questions for Kelly concerning this? No, I don't have a, a question for Kelly, but I do think that this is an important engagement uh, vehicle for us. Uh, it's important that the city reach out and uh, do these types of things periodically uh, as an effort to be in touch with and in tune with the citizens of Independence. So um, I encourage the moving forward on this. I think with staying with Tanner, it'll give us continuity to collect and analyze data, so it'll be much more relevant for us working with the same consultant than mm -hmm. switching to a different consultant at this time. It'd be, we risk getting some confusion or not being able to work in a straight line on where, we're, where we began to where we're going. Yeah, so. I, I agree. I'm glad they were able to accommodate yes. and were interested. All right, uh, if there's no further input on this, do I have a motion? I move to authorize the city manager to sign a, an engagement letter with Tanner LLC to create and analyze the results of a citizen satisfaction survey. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries, three zero. Item C, consider authorizing Trans Systems to prepare and submit KDOT City Connecting Link Improvement Program, CCLIP, 
grant applications for two projects. One, pavement restoration, Penn Avenue, US 75, from Morningside Drive to North City Limits, and number two, surface preservation, Chestnut Avenue, US 75, from near Penn Avenue to 9th Street. Go ahead. Um, good evening. Good evening. Previously, Trans Systems had created grant applications for these projects, and so in order to uh, submit them for the C-Clip pro, uh, pro, uh, grants, um, the uh, commission would just have to approve um, them submitting the, the grants, so the work has already been done. All right, I understand that uh, these projects are uh, slated to be started in 2023. I, I believe that's right. Um, I would have to check the grant funding, but I, I, that sounds correct. Okay, okay. And, uh, and I did notice in reading in the description that they are planning to uh, extend the width of the road by two feet? Uh, yes, there'd be, uh, yes, an overall two feet, um, and that's on the, the uh, northern portion between uh, Morningside and the city limits. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, do you have any questions that you would like to bring forth? No, I think this was submitted, what, a year or two ago mm -hmm. and was ago. denied funding. So mm -hmm. I think it's good to continue on and resubmit it and see how, how we can do. Okay. KDOT's been very, very good to independence with grants and uh, it's a good program and definitely needed work. And, so I'm glad we're resubmitting and didn't just file it, so thanks. Commissioner Hayes, do you have some input? No, I, indeed, I, I agree that we need to resubmit the, the grant application. The need still persists, so please, uh, I support this resubmission. All right, so I'm gonna entertain a motion. And there's, there's two, there'll be two listed here. <coughs> First, I move to authorize Trans Systems to prepare an application for KDOT's Clip Pavement Restoration Program for Penn Avenue, US 75, for Morningside Drive to North City Limits, and for staff to submit the application to KDOT. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. And do I have a motion for item number two? And I move to authorize Trans Systems to prepare an application for KDOT's CLIP Surface Preservation Program for Chestnut Avenue, US 75, from near Penn Avenue to 9th Street, and for staff to submit the application to KDOT. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Item D, consider setting a special commission meeting on February 17th, 2021, at 9 a.m. to discuss city facilities. Uh, Mayor and commissioners, um, we thought it would be best to set this as a special meeting so that you could have some discussion to discuss Commissioner um, Hayes' uh, suggestions on some alternatives and also to review um, a draft that we're working on for the marketing of Building D. And then hopefully by then, I may have some more updates on phase uh, one city hall on where they're at with the window replacement. All right. That's Wednesday, isn't it? Yes, okay. third yes. Wednesday, 9 a.m. It was, it was already yeah. set in your calendar, but this designates the, the purpose for the meeting. Okay. I, I think it's a good idea to sit down and discuss um, city facilities and uh, need to hear what's on, on each of the commissioner's minds. So uh, any Further comments concerning this? No, I'm I have not. All right, then uh, do I have a motion? I move to set a special commission meeting on February 17th, 2021 at 9 a.m. to discuss city facilities. Do I have a second? I second the motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Item five, discussion. Discussion related to use of public property and right-of-way policy, including consumption of alcohol. Uh, Mayor? 
Yes, David. You guys, the commissioner previously asked for us to put a policy together and working with the city attorney and everybody, uh, it has also came up in the past about alcohol consumption. So we wanted to have a discussion with you as we're putting this policy together and Jeff may have some more to add. If there's interest in any of that or exactly where you're wanting to go, we do have a, a policy drafted to show you, but if, if there is interest in creating the alcohol consumption, uh, then we need to discuss that to include that. And Jeff, do you have anything further to add on that? Yes, sir. Um, we currently have two city ordinances that I think are attached in your packet. Uh, one of them just states it's unlawful to drink or consume alcohol on any public right of way. There are some exceptions carved out for some of the buildings, but there's yet another ordinance that talks about the, really the kind of the downtown area for on-premises consumption. If you're within like 500 feet of a school, 300 feet of a church, or get this 150 feet of another place that sells alcohol. And maybe it's time to look at those Obviously, we've had requests in the past from the Independence Brew Works. They have a uh, outdoor patio on the west side that is adjacent, partly, it's partly in the right of way, I think, but it's also adjacent to a right of way. And there have been requests, they, they would like to know uh, how they could get a permit to have an, an event um, and serve alcohol in that area. And right now, there's no way they can. It's against city ordinance. So. The discussion tonight would be whether or not you want to um, set guidelines to allow such an event to move forward. What would those guidelines be? Obviously insurance requirements, some type of barrier or roping to keep the people consuming alcohol from wandering out in the street, you know, just a lot of safety things. We have a park policy that's fairly detailed that allows like they had Oktoberfest there. So we have in place some things, but they just don't apply to the right of way. They could, we could adapt and uh, things like that. But, uh, and also a discussion would be, and when they get a, a make application, they get a permit, is it for one day, two days, what's, what would be the maximum period of time for a permit to extend? Uh, so that's all I, were a lot of variables in that uh, they would have to carry a with it a one million dollar liability bond. Would that be right, Jeff? I don't have a copy of the park policy with me. There, um, there is an insurance requirement on the park policy. What if that dollar amount is? I honestly don't remember. Okay. I think Kelly in her uh, staff recommendation said she talked to EMC. They recommend requiring a special event policy be issued to the applicant for whatever dollar amount you think is appropriate. You know, a million dollars 20 years ago sounded like a lot of money. A million dollars today is it's still a lot of money. But yeah. But it's, uh, you see lawsuits in that range very often. <laughs> Not independence necessarily. But yeah, that, that's an important requirement. I think Neewala, when they do theirs, they don't have alcohol, but they're required to get insurance, special event insurance, right. and name the city's a additional right. insurer. This would be a lot smaller scale, but since alcohol is involved, yeah. it's probably a wise thing to require. EMC yeah. said if no alcohol was involved and it was simply what the brewery was doing right now, that event would not require insurance, but any event that has like rides or uh, different activities, uh, they request that we make them get insurance coverage for our protection. Maybe we we should talk tonight. Maybe as different steps, the basic right away request, then look at alcohol as a separate item. Then you know if there's something else leading to that, maybe we could be more productive and. And because uh, it seems like some will apply 
and some won't apply, and some will both will apply, but mm -hmm. you know, from what I I see in your your draft of the right of way application, you've got a lot of things covered that it's starting to bring continuity to the event. The uh, the thing I was wondering about uh, gray water containment, is that controlled with other codes or is that something that? That is controlled with our utility codes, but it definitely is probably something we need to include. Yeah. Uh, I, honestly, I didn't even think about that, but you know, it's definitely a concern. And if yeah. the state comes down like during Neil Walla events and they catch it, yeah. uh, we do. Can might get, cover grease disposal too. Yeah. I know that's always an issue with yeah. the food vendors. Yeah, and that can create a lot of issues for our sanitary sewer and yeah. storm water to get full of grease too. Yeah, even though it's a small event, it could lead yes to more trouble. And yep. on the electric, uh, if they do, we need to cover anything if they're receiving power from an existing service, like from the building. What about ground fault protection or anything in the in their their connection to protect the public. Yeah, I think that's that's would be very good. But you know, I really like you've put a lot of time into considering in the draft, and um, it it is good to see the acknowledgement. I think you had of the the vendor mm -hmm. also making an acknowledgement that they're aware of these too. Yeah. So. if you think it's appropriate on the one ordinance that has the distance restrictions there's a provision that uh, somebody can make application for and receive a waiver of the distance from the City Commission so if we set up a process for uh, temporary permits for events special events in the right-of-way uh, and let's say alcohol is involved do you, want, do you want the uh, a distance waiver procedure? I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm having a little trouble hearing you right now. Okay. It was Lacey. It's her kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I muted her. <laughs> my question is, do you want the, the distance waiver issue to come to the commission every time there's an application, or do you want to set enough guidelines and just leave that up to city staff? That would be well, something for you to decide. Could we take the the um, downtown map with the surrounding residential areas and could you overlay to show us how that distance affects the downtown area and then maybe we could see which businesses would be affected because if we know it's there, let's address it now and either make the exception or change it to look yeah. at the potential locations for it so that we can solve what you're talking about initially, Jeff, of not always coming back and we can have consistency in the ordinance and, uh, you know, if we need to change that distance, but, you know, I, th I think we'll see right off there could be a couple locations that would be in a conflict with the 200 feet from the residential area. So if we could address those now, it would make it easier for the owner and also city staff, and we can all come on board with it in the beginning. You might wanna also look at setting boundaries if you're looking at the downtown. You've already got the historical district and mm -hmm. fire limit boundaries, which are established and are the same, um, which would be easy to interpret. Well, I mean, the special event permit isn't limited to downtown, to be honest. Right. It, right. And the right-of-ways, the city has right-of-ways all over town. <laughs> um, let's say Jeff Chubb wants to have a block party and have a keg of beer in the right-of-way. Do you want to encompass something like that or not, you know? I think what I see mainly is the central business district. That would be a, a more significant impact. You want to limit it to the central business district? I think when we're looking at allowing an ordinance, you know, to try and 
actually to try and enforce that into the residential area consumption in a city right away in somebody's front yard that probably not practical cake party at leonard's house tonight <laughs> in the back <laughs> i i think that's a good point um because we sure don't want to be over overreaching on this so uh, i like that idea commissioner kaflish um, as far as uh, limiting that to the central business district and approach that. And I would like, I like the idea of, of, of uh, being specific enough to where it covers um, a good range of questions that would come to where city staff would have direction and be able to, um, to carry out that without having this another issue coming before the commission again, that it would be specific enough that uh, City Hall could run with it, mm -hmm. and uh, we would not have to be involved. So that that's also a good plus. I like that. And as far as utilities, um, um, anytime we've set, um, uh, I know working for the electric, we'd all, they'd always set a temporary pole with uh, ground fault indicator breakers on yeah. it. So that was just standard, yeah. and uh, that would be something that they could comply with relatively easy that would pass an inspection because it would be uh, firmly secured and it would have the right amount of outlets uh, for, for protection. Okay. So. The worst case scenario is running an extension cord from a building to a trailer and either the cord is in poor condition or traffic or right. it gets flawed and somebody gets electrocuted yep. walking across it or trip hazard will there are there any problems with cookers or something that needs to be brought out of I think Kelly kind of brought out the biggest concern we have is the grease and Frying. Frying and disposal. Disposal, or sometimes we see this happen. Uh, they just leave their five gallon bucket, sit there, and go. And we're left. Or they left. spill it and it makes a mess. Too. Yeah. Hmm. So that grease would be our biggest concern. Yeah. On the events that have uh, happened out there now, as far as these um, food trucks and these, this barbecue unit out there, uh, has that worked pretty well? I mean, it, there's not been very no. limited issues with that. Our only uh, issues we've had at the brewery is just getting it, understanding of where they were to be set up at, and once they got over on the right of way and everything has went well, I mean, uh, they do a very good job of cleaning and making mm -hmm. sure everybody, it was just we had a few times there they were blocking the whole street or on the other side of the street once we got all that straightened out and now they understand exactly where they're to be at we haven't had any problems good or any complaints that I'm aware of good that's a good tool for them to uh, bring food in because uh, from what I understand the first time they did it they yes. really increased their business yes. substantially and uh, I believe the people that were making the food pretty much sold out of everything that they had brought so right it was um, it was good for both the brewery and for the people that yeah. were selling food. Exactly. So, um, and I like the idea of that being able to uh, continue down the road. It's just another way to um, bring people to an area and to increase sales for the brewery and yeah. and help out a local vendor also. It just brings the question, kind of like what Jeff said: if there was a way for them to set up, because right now, if they want to drink, they have to get their food and they go back inside. Right. <laughs> If the commission was interested in, in that, then I think we we need to explore and be open to what would be workable for them. Well, indeed, and uh, I just want to reinforce that uh, events of this nature are very um, draw a lot of outside attention attention yes. from beyond the city limits of Independence, Kansas, and that brings people to 
town. And so not just here at the brewery, but, but throughout Independence, special events of this nature. We mentioned the Oktoberfest, which was yes. a very large event in its time. Yes. And so those types of activities that bring people to town increase our economic activity and are beneficial and introduce people to uh, the amenities of the town. So it's, uh, it's worthy to be open to this yes. type of activity, but it's also worthy to understand um, uh, the nature of uh, the obligation uh, and the responsibilities associated with using uh, the right of way and, uh, and public property in this way. So uh, just clarifying this in an ordinance or procedures of this nature is very apropos. So I, I encourage us to continue this conversation. Do you think with the parking lot on, uh, say, Chestnut, and 8th Street, where we did have the power pole put yes. in. Do you think there would be, in the future, somebody wanting to schedule an event to utilize the parking lot that maybe we should consider how that would be handled in a request for if this permit would apply, but also then the consumption of alcohol in that area? I think so. I see Lisa Wilson here. I don't know. Would you be willing to come up here and put some? I mean, I think it would. That is, I mean, they see expansion of their uh, farmer's market. They're doing different events in the evening. Uh, I've heard them discuss about uh, making that, having the street department remove some stumps and making the grassy area more usable. So I, I agree, Commission, that I think that is a space that could become a vital part of downtown and for different events. You have that yeah. space, you have the uh, pavilion that they're developing downtown. I mean, I know the, the different groups are working very hard to uh, vitalize our downtown. And there's several yeah. pr prospective businesses that are looking downtown and uh, uh, opening up different shops. So, I mean, there's a lot of activity happening downtown right now. I have a, um, a question um, over at uh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Kansas, with Pitt State, with all the events they have. They have the, the tailgates at football games. They have various breweries and bars and clubs in, in that area, and they're a, a big college town, probably six or 7,000 students. I'm just curious how they handle um, their events concerning right away, what the right away policy is, what their uh, policy is toward consumption of alcohol. I just wonder how they've regulated that, and if maybe that's something we could look at to see um, if they've already come up with a policy that works for them. Um, I don't have a problem in taking someone's idea and, oh, yeah. and, and using it here, but maybe that's something we might want to look at, being they're a close neighbor, yeah. see how they operate and yeah. learn from. I would uh, definitely ask for Chief Harrison. He's not here tonight, but his input and their <clears throat> recommendations and having him reach out to Pittsburgh and uh, to their chief and how they, I think that's a very good idea, Mayor. To see if they've ever if they've had any issues with the policy and yeah and what issues they were and what they did to correct those and right. and if it's a working policy for them then that's maybe something yep. that that we can adopt and that'll save us from doing a lot of more a lot more groundwork exactly. if something already exists that we can adapt to yeah we definitely can get that for you okay. Gentlemen. Any, any other comments? So would you like us, I mean, these things here, I know Jeff's gonna be gone for a few weeks, but we'll get with Chief Harrison and kind of bring back another round out of adding these things yeah. in. And I can, yep. Kelly and I can visit with some of the groups. Well, Main with Street Jeff Chamber. being gone, it'll probably be, bring it back in March. March. If that works. When Jeff gets back and we'll put it back, bring you another draft. That would be fine. That would provide us with some more information yep. and that yep. we could consider. Sounds good. You know, I'm, I'm good with that. Okay. Yeah, I think the planning is critical. Like Commissioner Hayes said, we got the opportunity to 
consider would make it all inclusive because yep. it is a, an effective tool yep. to bring people in and we can uh, accommodate uh, avoid problems right. before they become exactly. a problem. And we can reach out to the other organizations <clears throat> that may have some input of activities they're planning that we may not be, even be thinking of. Thank you. All right, thank you, staff. All right, moving along, item six, reports. Uh, gentlemen, have you had a chance to look at the fourth quarter treasury report? Yes. And are there any are you good with it? Do you have any questions concerning that? I had a couple of mine, mine were answered earlier, so I'm, I'm good. But I got the, uh, the second report late. I haven't had a chance to look through it. I'll look at it and get back with you. Okay, that'd be great. Uh, Lacey had some explanation in the email, which I liked her direction, so mm -hmm. with her explanation of it, so we'll, I'll get back with you. Okay. And Commissioner Hayes, you're good. I have reviewed it. I have no questions at this time. All right, thank you. Uh, we've had a chance to look at the January sales tax report, and there, where is that at? Right there in front of me, okay. <clears throat> And this would be um, this would be from November's. Yes. Okay, November from November sales. of 2020, November sales, and we have a drop of 3.4. I was trying to pick it up here with these glasses. Okay, I see it now. Okay, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what um, next month looks like, which mm -hmm. will be uh, the ending month, December of 2020. So and see how that goes. We, we had a good year last year, considering we were in, in the height of a p pandemic. So uh, hopefully the trend will uh, continue. We'll be able to hold our own and uh, have another good year sales tax wise. So gentlemen, any, any questions concerning the sales tax report? I'm good. I'm good also. All right, moving into B, airport five year CIP. John, how are you? Doing well. Good, Good evening. <clears throat> uh, there are three near-term projects uh, that are slated to either begin very shortly. Uh, the first two are reconstructing the South Apron, apron Ramp and also remarking the runway. Um, the first, we expect to give a notice to proceed to the contractor in March. Um, the second, we expect to give a notice to proceed in April or May to the contractor. So both of those projects are well underway and have already been obviously bid and awarded. Um, we have completed engineering on and are in the pre-bid phase on the taxiway B demo, which I believe has been previously presented to the commission. And the airport uh, parking apron uh, rehab. And we expect to bid, bid those in March or April. Um, the next projects are in 2023, 2024, and uh, 2026. And those are federal fiscal years, so some of it may spill into 2022, for example, like engineering. Um, that's seal coating and remarking the runways in 2023, uh, rehabbing the south portion of the taxiway in 2024, and in 2026, looking at guidance signs. So those are the projects as we currently know them. Okay, and then I see um, reconstruct runway. Yes, that's a that's a longer term. A longer term, yes. I see that's seven hundred ninety thousand dollars, the city portion of a total cost of, of seven million nine hundred thousand. Yes, it's and a very that's big project. slated for twenty twenty seven, or later. Twenty twenty seven or later. I, okay, that one was large enough that we thought it would be a good idea to put it on the radar, just so you knew that it was it was out there. Sure. Well, that continues to make our airport viable and um, continue to bring more traffic into the airport mm -hmm. so we can sell more fuel 
And of course, it's a benefit to keep the airport up for Textron, for Cessna. So, and, and our engineering firm has been uh, very good about assisting us in maximizing the federal and uh, state dollars that are available for our use. So I do one of that's Lochner and Associates. They've been very good about helping us with that. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, and this isn't related to these projects, but um, there was a question about um, not de-icing planes, but the, the runway itself. Uh, we can give you an update on that, David. Do you want to tell them what we're doing? Uh, yes. Uh, with the temperatures currently, and my, help me with this, John, and when we get to five degrees, correct? It, it the, sounded like that was about the, the temperature where the right. de-icer ceased to be effective. Yeah, and basically the runway has been shut down just because we couldn't break the ice this week. Uh, we did get a little just yesterday to where it did start working, but we brought a company down from Wichita with a special chemical, John, mm -hmm. that was able to treat and hopefully pre-treat and was uh, opened up the runway and the compass pads for Cessna to begin back production. Great. So it has been a very difficult week with these unusual Arctic blasts and the temperatures we've been and uh, visiting with Paula you know, we anticipate this weekend with the next even colder Arctic blast to create more issues next week. And, uh, but we did have to, uh, it was considerable bound money to bring them down and get our runways open. And, but hopefully the pretreatment will help us next week. Okay. Too. So Textron will be able to hopefully operate next week even. Yes. Uh, uh, with the prospect of even colder temperatures moving. Yes. In. Yes, we were able to get the runways back open and the compass pad and blast pad and all that is back in operation so that they could get back to testing their planes and back to flying today. They have several deliveries they'd like to do next week. Okay, yeah. great. That's good it, to hear. It, it, it's my understanding this has been a fairly unique event. Normally when it's this cold, it's not this wet. And normally when it's this wet, it's, it's not this cold. Yeah, and, and typical Kansas, we're cold. But two days later, we're above freezing again, and uh, the chemicals we have will work. But when we hit this sub, right. I mean, we even see it here in town. They, I mean, at some point, even the salt stops working. I mean, it's just so cold. So. How does Tri-City and Coffeyville handle in weather like this? Do they have a... Another company come in on treat it, there? You know, I was busy with Cody, and I believe all, uh, all of them have been pretty much shut down. I mean, they? Yeah. I mean, and it was with Cessna's help that we found this company in Wichita. Uh, they work on their Cessna runways and uh, to find this company to bring this treatment down. And John is researching mm -hmm. our abilities to maybe be able to provide this chemical in the future. But... You know, it could be like our last snow event in 2011 of yeah. any significance. It could be five or six years before we have another event like this. I that, hope so. And, you know, Paula's Cessna has been extremely well to work with, very understanding that this is a unique event that you, we don't face in southeast Kansas very often. Yeah, this is one more to be prepared on who to call to help than actually yes. purchase and have on store the chemicals or the equipment yeah but it just you know the more people that you can pull in yeah and to it's, a market it helps it's it's difficult because of fob <clears throat> and dean will know this more i mean we can only use rubber blades on the runway we have to be very careful <laughs> what we do out there is we break the ice up because we don't want to create i believe it's called fob correctly fob, fob. fob. and you and, can't use gravel yeah so and there's only a specific kind of de-icer we can use, and so it makes it very very difficult. Right. It's going to be a learning experience, yeah, but I'm sure John's up to it and Mike to Absolutely. keep this going. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad this is going to work out to the satisfaction of uh, Cessna and the city, and it's, yep. it's a good collaboration where they were able to help and we were able to yep. make contact with the vendor and do what we needed to do to keep yep. the runway open so so thank you to everybody that participated in that to make sure that that happened 
with the reconstruction of runway 1735, is that a total removal of the runway and reconstruction, or is it major maintenance? I, I would have to check on that. I believe at this point that it would be major maintenance. I don't believe it's a completely reconstruction, but I, I can check on that. Yeah. And would it shut the airport down, or do we have two runways? Again, I'll have to okay. check with, check with uh, Matt and see how those plans are, yeah. because they're pretty early on on those. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, John. Uh, gentlemen, we've had a, have you had a chance to look at the city board minutes, the library board minutes, the PNC board minutes, and the rec commission board minutes? I have. I have. No I have questions. A, I have. I have no questions. And I just want to say how much we appreciate those boards providing those so that everyone knows what, what's going on. And, and I hope that you find that as something valuable in your packets. You know, if not, you know, let us know. We can just post those yeah. on somewhere else. But, um, you know, any feedback, it, it's, I, th I think it's good for transparency so that everyone knows what the city boards are doing. Right. Well, I'd like to thank all, all the, the boards that turn in these reports on a regular basis. It does help us understand as commissioners uh, what you're actually uh, doing, and it gives us a chance to catch up as to where you're at. So. I know paperwork sometimes is the last to, to be followed through, but we do appreciate it that you that you all strive to get these reports into a timely manner so uh, they're available as to read. So, so thank you for taking the effort to do that. It's greatly appreciated. And they're all volunteers that serve on these city boards and they're giving their own time and it's just very appreciated. Well, thank you. <laughs> all right, moving along, uh, item seven. City manager comments. I'm going to have uh, David just kind of do a preliminary what we've been uh, doing on trying to plan for this um, potentially big storm event this weekend. Uh, commission, as, as you're aware, uh, we have two events coming in, the first being the Arctic Blast uh, with tomorrow uh, potentially wind chills uh, minus 30 degrees. Uh, we, we've already started to see some freezing meters in the community, and we just uh, have implemented uh, stop meter reading, trying to keep the uh, meter pits closed so that the cold air isn't getting in there. And uh, we encourage our citizens, and we'll be doing some social media posting, uh, you know, keep something dripping in your house, keep that water flowing uh, so that a meter doesn't freeze. Uh, uh, we want to do everything we can to stop that. Uh, so that, that's our, one of our first priorities uh, is dealing with that. The other is concern of our employees this Saturday. Uh, we are going to suspend trash services. Uh, we, depending on the conditions of the weather, we may have them in the trucks, if possible, doing some of the business route, but they will not be on the back of the truck just due to the conditions of the weather. That is possibly could be suspended on Monday with what we anticipate with some very heavy snows and continuing of the Arctic blast, uh, we may have to suspend, but we will get trash service back and going as quick as possible and at least get once one pickup a week. So in next week, uh, other issues that we're doing is just trying to prepare. You know, we're seeing numbers all over the place from two to 30 plus potential in inches of snow that could be possible with this storm coming in Sunday. It's going to be a prolonged event starting sometime Sunday, lasting into Tuesday or early Wednesday at this point. Uh, we brought all of our staff in and uh, began planning today. Uh, did an initial planning of equipment, making sure all our equipment is. Uh, as you know, with diesel, even with additives that these subarctic temperatures uh, can gel on you, so making sure we get the additives we needed. Uh, working with Angela, Angela's been very busy at the park, um, getting shelter for the animal, moving the animals, and to ensure that we have everything covered there. Uh, we're also trying to cover our bases for power outage in the community. Uh, we 
have Vic Gorman and the Methodist Church is already available with their shelter. Uh, we will be available with Memorial Hall if needed, if we should have a power outage or a gas issue in town where people lose power. Of course, we also have um, Building D, which is generator powered, if we would need to utilize that. Uh, so all our crews are kind of in a preparation. Uh, fire EMS has uh, done a lot of different work at staffing to make sure we can cover in these amounts of snow. We've worked with Labette Health uh, discussing all plans if we get a large snow event of how we're going to handle patient transports and stuff like that. Uh, so at this time, we're, we kind of have an emergency a team together. Uh, we are meeting daily. We'll meet again at 8.30. We'll reevaluate the latest weather reports and continue to meet up until the event happens and throughout the event. Uh, Kelly will be working with Joanne to put a lot of different social media information out to our citizens so they're aware of what, they, what to expect. Uh, again, encouraging them to keep something dripping in their homes during these real cold temperatures and other safety information to help them. So uh, we're hopefully prepared, hopefully it passes us, but if it does come, I think we'll be ready to handle it. And is there any specific questions you guys might have or? Well, would you suggest to the citizens themselves that they make some storm preparations uh, in yes. their homes? Yes, uh, this, could, this very good point, and it is a point that we're gonna make in social media. This is gonna be a prolonged event, especially when you start thinking uh, tomorrow, uh, Saturday especially, these sub cold temperatures, uh, and in the snow, it's a long event, Sunday through potentially Wednesday. If we receive those 20, 30 inches of snow, they are not gonna be able to get out. So, you know, some pre-planning, uh, being able to sustain yourself for three or four days at your home, having enough food and supplies during that time would be very wise of our citizens. David, uh, I know certain of our streets are considered to be critical uh, routes for emergency vehicles and otherwise, um, but they are hard to clear if there are uh, par cars parked on the street. Would, be, would there be an advantage to the city to restrict parking on certain streets in anticipation of having huge piles of snow to move out of the way? Mike is here, but again, we do encourage citizens. You are exactly correct. Cars parked in the street does make it difficult for our snow plows to get up and down the streets. It is very critical 